Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars, and we've certainly got one for you today. Ben Folks is the actor and writer from Cornwall who is best known and loved, if not adored, by hundreds of millions of children around the world via CBeebies for Mr. Bloom. This Christmas, he will be in Derby for Beauty and the Beast, which is set to be their most shimmering, most outrageously brilliant pantomime ever, and we're delighted to say Ben joins us on the show now. How are you? I am very well, thanks, man. Thanks for asking. What's it like to be you? Because I'm a deeply unattractive man that most people don't particularly like, whereas you are a nice bit of trouser that's adored. That's nice. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I don't, I don't quite know what you mean. Yeah, we, we do a lot of work um, on CBBs uh, with, with the character of Mr. Bloom, and it's, it's a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of fun. But it's uh, equally lovely to... Uh, to get the opportunity to come to Derby to do Panto here uh, this year. I've never been to uh, Panto uh, in Derby before, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. The synergy is perfect, really, because the ethos of CBeebies is, is to educate and entertain kids, educate them without them knowing, make them have lots of shiny things and uh, lots of entertaining things to keep them entertained, and that's exactly what Pantomime does, really. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful medium because it, it basically tackles... Uh, a, a, like a real uh, well all the facets of, uh, of theatre really it's got song it's got dance it's got comedy it's got uh, melodrama maybe the tragedy um, it, it just it touches on all those aspects of theatre and uh, and certainly you know on, on the CBBS channel you've got uh, a whole slate of different programmes which deal with numeracy through to uh, uh, I don't know what um, uh, trains <laughs> I mean it, it touches on everything so and certainly with Panto is sometimes it's uh, for, for the younger audience it might be their first experience of, of being inside a theatre or of seeing a uh, theatrical production so it's uh, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a win-win situation I don't think Panto's ever been taken more seriously, has it? I saw the Palladium show last year. I've been to Derby. The Nottingham one's wonderful. Birmingham. They put a ton of money into these shows, and it's amazing the effort that goes in for just a few weeks' run. It's incredible. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's certainly uh, all the people that are involved in Panto do it because they love it, and it is. It's a fantastic, uh, well, very British, uh, British uh, example that we have, which... Look, I don't know how it would go down in uh, if in America or somewhere like that, but you know, culturally, it's very, um, it's highly revered in this country, and that's because at the moment there's so many companies do it, like putting together great productions uh, that are very passionate about the content, and and certainly for theatres as well, it's important because you know theatres, uh, it, it's hard for them at the moment. You know, some of them they're under and uh, it's important that uh, you know pantos are able to come into venues so that they can help support uh, the venue for the rest of the year when they're programming other sorts of uh, sorts of content which might not be as uh, commercial as, as panto. Let's talk about you for a little bit and your beginnings. How did you get here today via Mr. Bloom? I mean, you're a serious actor and you've done many jobs before this. It's just that that happens to be the most famous. Did, did you always intend to be an entertainer or is that just something that happened? Yeah, so uh, I think it's one of those things when you're, when you're young, you, you get fixated by an idea of what you might like to be when you're, when you're older. And, and mine was just about doing shows. I just wanted to to be in people's shows, other people's shows. I wanted to be in my own shows, and it was just all about making content or being in, uh, yeah, other people's. And so from then it was doing as much damn drama as I could squeeze in and then going off to, uh, to drama college and training. And then once we finished there, we just moved to Manchester and started the process of auditioning both for agents, but at the same time of writing my own material so that... <clears throat> So that uh, uh, you know, it's just another opportunity to to perform and to to be involved in the creative process. So it's very much there's been no uh, masterminding of trying to get into uh, preschool television or or into panto. It's just a case of putting your hand up for what's on offer and making your own uh, opportunities as well. So so I did a lot of theatre, indoor theatre, and then um, got some commissions for outdoor theatre, and then it was in. 2000 and, uh, 2008 when I 
had my first uh, child born we started watching CBBS. I saw that there was an avenue for developing one of my theatre shows uh, mm. and developing it for for CBBS because uh, there was no there were no programs about gardening or singing dance vegetables. So I thought there might be a need. And uh, yeah, so since then that that gave me the opportunity. Luckily, they were interested in Bloom, so it, it went into production, and then that gave me the opportunity to write uh, for for television as well. And since then. I've been lucky enough to be able to, to take on all other sorts of roles and continue to to write in different uh, different mediums. And now, luckily, I had the opportunity to um, uh, get commissioned for some picture books. So it, it's always been about just uh, just you know, reacting to what's in front of you, taking uh, chances and opportunities, and uh, just put the legwork in, and hopefully one out of five things might come up. Well, but for most people, that doesn't happen. They never get the big break. You quite humbly at the beginning battered off my compliment about you being a megastar. But let's face it, the power you guys have via uh, these children's characters. I spoke to Justin the other day. I mean, these guys are doing arenas and big theatres, as are you. I mean, if you're a star with the kids and they embrace you and love you, to them, you're everything. It's amazing the popularity that you can have via a show like yours. Yeah, well, I I think it's certainly... It all hinges on, yeah. It all hinges on one thing, and that's the BBC. And I think as a whole, um, because it is, it's the BBC. And when, when I looked at where I wanted to pitch my children's show, the first port of call was the BBC, because I grew up with the likes of uh, Oliver Postgate and all of the the, the the wonderful content that was put out. And uh, children's is one of the core values of uh, the BBC. It's uh, it's part of the remit that they have to provide fantastic concept for children right? and that's, they certainly do that and I think it's such a um, such an honour and I'm so grateful to be part of that CBBS team because yeah you've got Justin uh, um, and all of the other guys I mean you could it's, it's impossible to list them but uh, the, the the animation the, the animated shows the live action shows all the presenters and I think you, you see it when you get together for maybe the Christmas show or for um, you know the proms or, or the Shakespeare shows that we do and I think it's as a parent that's also where I I came across it first I, I was watching it with my daughter as a parent and so it's like my goodness me he's doing great stuff and uh, Chris and Poi are, are doing this and, and when you fi- finally meet them it's 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 overwhelming because you, you you take an interest in what your child is interested in, and you want to make sure that what they're exposed to is, is going to be beneficial. And uh, with that, CD, you, you, you totally know it's a safe environment. And so, I feel very lucky to be on on the other side now, where mm. you're part of that family. And uh, and yeah, it's certainly going back to the all of the postgate stuff, all of those programs, backless, slangers, um, all of those programs hold a, a very kind of special place of nostalgia in your heart. And, uh, and it's brilliant. And it's like being a doctor, hairdresser or funeral guy. They're always going to want to be kids that want to be entertained. So every time you lose one, you're going to gain another at the other end. So it's brilliant as a business plan, isn't it? Well, you, you know, I mean, CBBC is not to seven, and uh, and then CBBC um, takes them on after that, and uh, and that, and that's also the curious thing as well, because I mean, Bloom, that for, uh, I'm trying to think now, that came out in 2011, so there's children that were, you know, that's 60 years ago, so now some kids have gone way beyond that, and it would be, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. probably highly embarrassing if uh, they were to, to watch it again, but uh, but no, I, I can't. I can't stress enough how um, yeah, how lucky I feel to be part of that family because it is it's very much a uh, yeah a family. Did you once appear in Hollyoaks? Yeah, so we had a storyline um, in Hollyoaks a while back now, maybe a few years ago, and and that was great because you know there was there was the opportunity to to take on a a role which um, you know it, it had nothing to do with CBBS, but. Um, but it was it was a nice storyline, and I think also that you know what, because you're you're seen as as Mr. Bloom or you're a peer on the preschool channel. It's nice when uh, people give you opportunities to, to do other stuff, and and so yeah, I mean there's still there's some bobs of other theatre or um, other broadcasts which I'm able to do, and, and I, again I feel lucky in as much as Mr. Bloom as a character. So um, when he's on a stage or screen. 
being Mr. Bloom and saying, oh, tiddlers and stuff like that. Uh, that it's, it's quite easy. Well, I say it's easy, but I'm able to disassociate myself from that by taking off the costume and the accent. Mm. And let's talk about the costume very finely. Whose idea was that? Is it necessary? <laughs> Is it necessary? <laughs> We've got to wear something. Um, it's, all, it's all part of uh, production development. So when we were... It's when a it clever was, gimmick. We should, we, we just went through everything, you know, in terms of uh, the, the production design for the set, the characters, and yeah, we just, uh, it was it was quite an easy process, actually, with produ- uh, the producer and the director, we just discussed what we thought, and then there was, there were a few, I think at one point, he might have had a, uh, like a, some sort of cravat, ribbon, and scarf <laughs> type affair, which didn't make the cut, and a linen coat. So, I mean, all of these things, they just, you, they end up in the, in the bin. But, uh, but yeah, the costume is one of those ones. It's uh, In the summer, it's, it's a bit too warm, and in the winter, it's, it's not quite enough. But, uh, <laughs> but it's good, man. It's, it's, it's an iconic look. And, uh, You've got to have a gimmick, and you've certainly got one. Yeah. Ben Fox will be part of the star cast of Beauty and the Beast this Christmas at Derby Live. And just tell us about your part. Are you playing the Beauty or the Beast? Which one? I wish, man. I'd, I'd take any. But, uh, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> anything I could take. I'd be Mrs. Potts. I, I, right. <laughs> I will be playing um, Idle Jack. So I am son to the dame, uh, Betty Brioche. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll be in the kitchen shirking uh, a juicy, probably. But, uh, but yeah, so I'll be uh, playing the fool to the dame. It is a joy, isn't it, when you stand on that stage and you see those kids laughing. It never gets old. And the fact the script is probably as old as it was when it was first written 100 years ago doesn't matter. We're waiting for those standard gags. We want them. And when they come, we just love them. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's very true. You know, Panto is an institution and there's certain expectations that, uh, that you have. Uh, but what's interesting as well, I mean, it's the first time I've worked with Little uh, the company here who are producing the Panto but what's really exciting is that they write all of their shows from scratch so even though it is the story of Beauty and the Beast um, every year when they put on a, uh, a Panto they, they write the script from scratch so there will be some stuff which you know uh, 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 not recycled uh, well basically they'll use format points but uh, they classic gems let's work. call them that yeah 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 and all those format points of slosh scenes or uh, the the ghost uh, the ghost scene all of those things they will be in there but but they uh, they write from scratch which is a, it's a bold move it's a lot of hard work as well I'm amazed I mean I know some of them go on for weeks on end it's two shows a day six days a week plus rehearsals are you match ready <laughs> I've still got some time thankfully um, I don't know when this is going to be going out but, uh, but yeah we've still got a bit of time before uh, before we start so yeah I will be eating well I'm going to have my flu jabs get immunised uh, <laughs> plenty of vitamins uh, Barocca every day and, uh, and don't yeah, shake the hands of the punters because you'll get a cold yes indeed well you know we've, we've got to take care of each other but, uh, but I've got to say it's, it's lovely because it's, it's a real like you say it's a heavy schedule but once you get into the groove it's it's fantastic and you know you know whether it's four weeks six weeks there's always a finite yeah. amount of shows and so you, you get to the end of it but it's a lovely <clears throat> it's a lovely protest to over and again a very fortunate one where you get to wake up in the morning have your breakfast go and knock out a couple of shows and then get to bed and do that rinse and repeat it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. Your much love. I'm sure the stage door is also a thrill when those kids look at you with that just undying respect and love which they do. Ben Folks is one of the big stars of Beauty and the Beast coming to Derby this Christmas. I look forward to seeing you. Thanks for your time, Ben. Thank you, man. Thank you.